What is up? Welcome back to another Thursday Night Grind. My name is Matt, and every Thursday night I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge. It is uh, Thursday Night Grind episode 15, so I do one of these every week. We're going hot for 15 weeks, and it is April 9th, 2020. Yo, do me a favor. Hit, smash the thumbs up for that sound quality. Can you dig it? Can you see this? I have a lavalier mic. Hat tip to the guys. Uh, over at Think Media for hooking me up with ideas on how to improve my YouTube channel. I'll include a link to them down there. Uh, and also what you can't see is a light that's shining on me that they hooked me onto too. So if I think of it, I'll include a link to both of those. And if I'm really good, I'll include Think Media's link to both of those so that they can get, uh, if you go to it, they get a little shout out too. Uh, via the Amazon affiliate program because I am not currently an Amazon affiliate. All right, but anyway, so uh, I'm continuously trying to up my game here. Uh, and if you've been watching for the past 15 weeks, you've probably noticed that my sharpening studio has gone through some pretty major renovations. It's come a long way. It feels good. Like this is a sweet little sharpening shop, uh, the, the man cave, but it produces money instead of sucking money. Uh, it's awesome. We're going to do some pinking shears tonight. And uh, this is the real deal, guys, because... Uh, they, they don't, they don't always come out good. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I was thinking about, it. I don't know if it's pinking shears or, uh, paper cutters, uh, that bring me the most like hesitation about whether or not they're actually going to cut when they're done. Uh, I'll show you everything that I've learned to try to do. I also think that the, the YouTube is not flush with, um, good, uh, videos on sharpening pinking shears. So I'll get to these in one minute, uh, but I didn't want to zoom past the growth of the studio. And um, one thing that I advocate uh, or that I teach in, like when I work with people who want to start, start a sharpening business is to, is to appropriate the money that comes in before it comes in. So very early in the business design stage, we outline like, uh, you know, after, so first thing we do is find out like, really think about why do I want to start a sharpening business? And then secondly, like when that business is generating revenue, what am I going to do with it? Uh, and the reason that I, I'm so passionate about that is because I'm, I'm so guilty of putting money in my wallet and then it disappears, right? But it, instead what I do is anytime money comes in, I put it in a pile at the end of the month, I go through that pile and some of it's literal, some of it's digital, but anyway, and then I appropriate that money. So I wanted to show you real quick how I do that and check this out. As I walk away, the sound stays good. That's awesome. The first thing I do, 20% of everything I make goes into savings. 20 cents out of every dollar goes in the pot. There's a couple of good reasons for that. One is because it's important to save money. Uh, case in point with the COVID thing going on, right? Like it's good to have a little stockpile of, res of cash reserves. Uh, but also from the business perspective, um, one thing that I read as I'm learning more about business is that the IRS likes to see that you have capital and reserves. Um, uh, the thing that I'm concerned about is getting called out as a hobby and not a business. Uh, so I'm just trying to check all those boxes to make sure that, that I look legit and that I really, like I really am legit. Um, cause I don't have the money to hire people to do that for me. Right. So that's one thing. Second thing is 15% into marketing. When I was starting out, that number was a little bit higher. Uh, right now I could actually probably even afford to shim that back a little bit because, uh, the wheels have gotten moving and, um, I'm kind of limited to how much work I can actually do. So I need to be sometimes a little careful about how much work I bring in because I want to maintain the highest quality that I can for my customers, which means uh, really setting expectations. But really what I like is a quick turnaround and very high quality, like a high quality sharpening job. Uh, but anyway, so and the other, you know, that illustrates that these numbers can can move around a little bit. Like once once money goes up a little bit, I'd love to shift this savings number up to 50%. That's what I tell my six year old. I tell her like, if there's one thing that you do starting right now, say 50 cents of every dollar that you make, and some year you will thank me that you did that. I wish I had done that. And I still wish I would. Like I got to start taking my own advice. The last two, uh, first one here is uh, APP. That stands for the Applied Permaculture Project. 
And that is uh, that goes back. There's a whole story behind that, but that's largely why I started the American Edge was to generate revenue to put into my property. Uh, and I also recognize everything's connected. So putting in money into my property, growing systems, growing my family with them, getting us all involved in projects outside, like growing food, chickens, eggs, perennials, rainwater harvesting, all that stuff costs money. And it doesn't like if you like you might think, oh, it's only a few hundred bucks, but like a few hundred bucks a few times, like that starts adding up. And I didn't have the money coming in from my job to be able to justify pulling out hundreds of dollars from time to time. So I needed to make hundreds of dollars. And that's why I started the American Edge, which is this last column. And part, another thing that I really teach is continuously putting money back into the business to grow for the future, to be positioned uh, for future growth. Even if you're not like in that stage, like, like be on the lookout for tools that go on sale. Like now's a great time, right? Um, and like, even if you're not really ready to get into hair shears or scissors or clippers or whatever it might be, like if you see a deal, like it, it would be worth investing in that, like just pre preparing yourself for the future and then also making it like making it fun. Like it's fun to be able to buy stones and like get the diamond stones for the edge pro or like get a rack of belts for the one by 30. Right. So like it's fun to, to invest money into the business. But what you've seen, the reason I'm bringing this up is I've kind of coupled these two lately because in a large part, the business is part of the applied permaculture project. Uh, it takes a little little shaping of the mind and the, the, the view of permaculture to see it that way, but that's the way I see it, uh, more as permanent culture than permanent agriculture. Uh, so the business, like by starting a business, running a business out of the house, I can't help but be teaching entrepreneurship to my children. Right. And then plus the money comes in like it. And then like we're investing, like it's all connected. Right. So I felt comfortable combining these two. And that's uh, that's why for the past several months, most, you know, 65 uh, percent of the money that's come in from the business has gone into building out this space, which is walls, uh, floor, tools, benches, uh, um, a vice like benches, like uh, lights. I mean, it's a lot electrical, all that stuff adds up, man. So, um, I guess I just wanted to, sh I really felt compelled to share that with you, uh, to, uh, because I'm such an advocate for the knife sharpening as a side business. And like, what's your dream? Like, this is mine. Like, you don't need to have this. I'm not saying like go all permaculture. Um, but you have something. You've got a dream inside of you. And with a few bucks and a little bit of time, I think you can make it happen. So um, I wanted to share that with you before we get into pinking shears. And now let's get into pinking shears. All right, I'm I got some stuff to show you here, but let's head over to the scissor sharpening station. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do this on the twice as sharp. Uh, but before we do, I got to try to get you a close up here. All right. So these, these are pinking shears, right? Like the jagged edge sewers use them. I've, um, I did a little bit of research on these. I've, I've, I've done a bunch over time. Uh, they can, they can be a little frustrating. One thing to, to really to start looking for, um, is what's called the lap line. And if you can see it, there's a line on the teeth there um, that is coming in a little blurry. But right along the teeth, you see a line and it's called a lap line. And what uh, I have discerned by reading some some content online is that it uh, if that lap line isn't there, meaning you've sharpened past that line, throw them away. They're done. Uh, there's plenty of sharpenings left in these, uh, but don't, don't be getting into them, um, without checking that because if it's not there, uh, I just want to make sure I save you from being, you putting yourself in a position where a customer could say you ruined my, sh my, my, uh, pinking shears. Um, so check for that. Uh, the other thing which I'm going to do is a cut test before, uh, and we'll do one after. Uh, be, and this, all right. So like, you can tell I'm a little nervous. Like this is the real deal here, guys. Like if it was any, any, a recorded video or like another way, uh, I might, I might not publish it, but we're, we're committing here. 
All right, so you can, I don't know if you see that, but it's not cutting. It's, uh, actually, none of them are cutting. Okay, all right, so clearly room for improvement. I have had some come across the bench that do cut, and that makes it uh, a little bit harder to figure out how, how much progress you've made. All right, we'll come back to that. I'm gonna turn some light on over here. And uh, all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get out my Sharpie and I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the whole thing. Like I know sometimes with some things when I'm setting angles, uh, I will just pick a spot and set the angle to that and then cut around it. But I'm gonna paint the whole thing here because I don't wanna miss any tooth. I don't know if you can see me doing that or not. Um, hopefully you at least get the idea. The point is after we run it across the, the wheel, I need to make enough passes so that I'm cutting through uh, every peak and every trough of every tooth. So I can't miss any. The other thing to note, um, and you can't always tell, but if, uh, if anybody has put a little file on the inside of a tooth, uh, you've, it's pretty much destroyed them. Like maybe you can grind past the damage that they that has been caused by that. Uh, but you know that said, like don't get yourself in that trap where you think like, oh, if I just get a little file and get in there, like man, don't do it. Uh, if they're yours, do whatever you want. Just like don't do that to a customer's shear. Oh, the other thing, like I'm gonna do this on the on the twice as sharp. Uh, you can do this on the on the Edge Pro. Uh, it, it might take a little time. Um, but it's doable. It's doable. Still, like uh, some of the the process of like um, pinching, pushing apart. Sorry, yeah, pushing apart when I've built a burr and then pull, like pulling the burr back that way. Just repeat that process that we're going to do here if you do them on the edge pro. Okay, so now the next thing is getting it in here. We're only doing it on the on the course wheel. Uh, no honing for pinking shears. <clears throat> the angle is probably going to be about zero and actually I have um, this one is the the older one that I have forgive the light quality here a lot of background light with that fluorescent on can you see that anyway that one just goes to zero since then they've come out with one that is uh, goes past zero if you've never used this, that might not mean anything to you, but uh, this is a great tool for doing pinking shears, so keep your eye out for them. Again, if you haven't seen the other videos I did with scissors, like this twice as sharp I got from... Uh, that is dark, man. Too much background light. Um, I found that on Craigslist for a pretty good deal. Okay. Gonna get you right in on the action if I can. As a, oh, the other thing which I didn't mention, so like the shop is almost done. The next step is, uh, is improving like uh, dust collection for all the grinding tools for my own health and for the, the cleanliness of the shop. Uh, and that's a pretty big investment the way I want to do that. But when that part is done, uh, I will uh, be ready to invest in better camera gear and, and AV stuff. Um, I'm doing that slowly over time, like with this this cheap mic and this light that is not powerful, more powerful than these fluorescents. Um, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Thanks for bearing with me. I start at zero. Actually, it looks a little less or more than zero. Let's go to five and see how that looks. Scratch test. Yeah, not quite to the edge of the tooth. Go back up to zero. Okay, that is, uh, it's removed, man, I'm sorry about that. It's removing enough of, it's like not getting all the way back to the back of, edge of the, the shear, but it's, it's cutting the, the peak in the trough. So that's cool with that. That's a zero right where I kind of expect it to be. So let's just scope out our path. Always going from the, the heel to the tip. Uh, 
Sanity check. Looks good. Oh. There we go. Let's check that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beauty. Falls off at the tip a little bit, but that's all right. Little wavy. Getting there. All right, so this is actually good. Like this is why you gotta, you gotta. Well, you can tell. Like it gets shiny when uh, when you cut that steel off, but. There's a few teeth up here that are not getting all the way to the tips, the peaks. Notice a spot back there too that just need a touch up. Take a little bit of work here. Almost, but not quite. Still not quite there, and I, I'm seeing at the the tip of these that that lap line is getting kind of kind of shallow. Don't want to take more than we need to here. Man, that was close. Just one missing. One more to even it out. Man, that one is just not quite there still. I do not want to move on without it. Got her. Okay. Go right to the next one. Oh, and I should tell you, like the best instruction that I found for this was from the video that came with the twice as sharp system. We've got enough light there. Sanity check. Looks good. Not a that's uh, fascinating. There is also a decent uh, forum going back to twenty fifteen on Tormax website. Uh, I'll try to include a link to that in the video below. And in that is also a link to the, uh, uh, hold on one sec. The, uh, one of the original patents for uh, peaking shears from, the, from 1931 or two. I didn't get to read it all, but. I bet it is a fascinating read. Still watching that lapping line or lap line. It's looking good. There's it's getting close there, but I, I'm not to the not to the peak on this yet, so I still need some more down. Can you imagine doing this on the edge pro? Oh my god. So you just be sawn away, sawn away. You can do it. You can do it. Oh man, I I'd want to quit now. I wouldn't want to get that last little tip. I got her. All right, one last I want to just kind of even that with one last stroke down the hole. Shoot. Good lap line left. All right, that's it. No honing on this one. Woo, 
that's loose. Easy. All right. Good to see. Not sure why that happened. All right, I'm going to leave that off to remember to put a wrench on it before we're done. But uh, all right, so now pushing them apart as I close the shear, like pushing the blade, the two blades apart with this hand as I close the shear with this hand. Okay, and then pulling the burr back. Okay, now pinking shears are sharp. Come on, baby. Nothing. Ah. All right, with a little side pressure they cut. All right, so they don't, all right, well, not perfect. This one catches. All right, so I still think that's way better. Yeah, if no side pressure, no cutting. Side pressure, they cut. All right. I'd have to, uh, this would be a great time to consult my man uh, Jim McDonald over at uh, Jim Sharp Blog to, uh, to get his input on, like, should it be, uh, I don't know, like, do I, do I tension this? Turn that off to try to actually talk to you. Like, do I, do I work with the pivot here? Like, is there something that the set could adjust? They are with shears, right? Like they're not garbage. Um, there's a few years behind them, but I mean, they, yeah, sorry. Just over here cutting stuff by myself. Like, um, and then maybe like, is the fabric the right material to be cut testing this on? Like, these are good questions. If you know, please leave the comment in below. They cut okay with side pressure. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it good. You know what I could do? I'm wondering if I want to take. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I might mess with it. I might, I might mess with the this the. Although there's not much to mess with there. But anyway, that that's that's good enough for this video. Uh, <laughs> like not perfect, right? Like I was a little nervous going in, and they're not great. They do cut, but they're not. Not awesome. Uh, so the, some things like I might mess around a little bit more, but we're already 20 minutes into this video. Some things that I might try is adjusting this, uh, this, uh, the tension on this pin here. Um, but that like, there's not a, they're a little bit like they could be tightened up a little bit. Um, but I got to figure out how to do that. That's a, it is a unique, you see that's kind of a unique fitting right there. The other thing which I might do is, so what I've done is uh, like I pulled the burr and there's no burr there. I don't know, I was thinking I could take like one more light pass on each on each blade to uh, and then do that same thing again. Let's do it. You got a minute, right? You, you guys going anywhere? Light show. Um... Oh shit. Excuse me. All right, I tightened it by hand. I think we'll be all right for this just to pass. One. Two. Turn that off. Push apart. I think it's the I think it's the tension. Um, uh, actually, maybe a little better. Try not to cheat with my side pressure. Yeah, no, it's still it's a side pressure thing. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna monkey around with it a little bit more, but that's uh, that is good for tonight. Okay, another Thursday night grind wraps up with pinking shears. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Please, uh, 
please like and subscribe to the channel and check out all the other 14 Thursday night grinds where I go through sharpening all sorts of stuff and uh, each one that I've done I think with maybe a rare exception uh, has been for uh, for profit like it's part of the business right like uh, oh the other thing which I didn't want to I, I didn't share with you yet but I was just uh, thinking of before we go like this uh, with the, the the COVID pandemic going on I've I've done what I'm considering like a soft open. So I'm still putting everything out that I'm closed. And I'm sh you know, sharing this with you as like a, a um, another uh, business. Like, if, like I think this business actually is suited just fine for what's going on right now because uh, I have drop boxes out at the end of my driveway. Uh, but when, like I've been, had a lot of people reaching out to me and like I found, I, I took, I guess, a couple of weeks off and I actually, I kind of missed it, man. Like I, I like sharpening. So, um, uh, I, I was I've, I kind of really wanted to open up. So my wife and I spoke about it, and we uh, the 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 goal that I'm shooting for is not to have more than one person on the bench at a time. So one in, one out, and um, I I uh, that's that's the plan. And though, and then I clean like I, I try to sanitize everything that comes in. I sanitize the boxes each time that they're used, and I'm uh, just trying to keep a, a real good handle on cleanliness. But it gets me. Um, it keeps me in. I like it. It's, it's fun. I enjoy it. And it's nice making money. Um, uh, there was one other thing. Uh, I don't, I forgot. Okay. Well, pleasure. Um, please, uh, if you have any questions at all, reach out. I'll leave my contact info in the, uh, in the description. And I also read all the comments. So thanks a lot. Stay well out there. And uh, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. Cheers.